In this guide to VATSIM, we'll cover filing a flight plan and clearance and departure at a controlled airport, as well as en route and approach in both controlled airspace and on Unicom. This video assumes you're already familiar with planning a flight, whether that's in the MSFS world map or Simbrief. Please also make sure you're already familiar with basic operation of your airplane in both managed and selected flight modes to use the Airbus terminology. I do have separate tutorials for flight planning and operation of Airbus and Boeing airplanes on this channel. To fly on VATSIM, you'll need to have signed up for an account and passed the basic pilot certification. Additionally, vPilot must already be installed on your system with your VATSIM credentials already set up in the preferences. Again, separate videos exist on YouTube for signing up to VATSIM and installing vPilot. Now it's time for stage one of a flight on VATSIM, filing your flight plan. This is the My VATSIM Filer Flight Plan page and a link to this is in the description below. First off, your call sign should be the ICAO code of the airline you're flying as and either the real world flight number or a memorable number for you. Flight rules are of course IFR in an airliner. The aircraft type is the four character identifier of the airplane you're flying. I've put a link to these in the description below. As for weight category, most airliners fit into the medium category. The heavy category is for 747s and super for A380s. For aircraft equipment, we need to briefly head over to a different website. Here is the IVAO documentation library, which is linked in the description below. It contains a comprehensive list of aircraft equipment for common types. For example, here we're using the Airbus A320 and the equipment we need to declare is listed in this table. We'll now return to VATSIM's Fighter Flight Plan page and enter the equipment we found on the IVAO page. For airlines, transponder type is S. Departure and arrival airports are straightforward. Off block time is when you hope to leave the gate and your alternate should be a suitable airport that you can divert to if required that's near your destination. Altitude will be the cruising altitude you've selected either in the MSFS world map or Simbrief. So looking at the airspeed column, 488 knots is Mach 0.8, which is the speed that most airliners cruise at once they reach their cruising altitude. On route time is your predicted flight duration. Again, you can get that from your flight planning tool. Finally, fuel endurance. If you're cheating like I am and using unlimited fuel in the sim, just enter 24 hours. Otherwise, you can use your flight planning tool to give yourself a more accurate estimate. Route details is where you'll populate the en route waypoints and airways from your flight planning tool. Remember, don't insert SIDs and STARS here as these will be assigned to you by ATC. And with that, you're good to go. Scroll down, hit File Flight Plan. Load in at the gate and connect to vPilot, entering your flight number, aircraft type and cell cal code. You can usually find the cell cal code printed on the bulkhead of the plane you're flying. The first radio frequency you want to tune at a controlled airport is the aerodrome information frequency. If you double click that, it will auto tune the airplane's radios and you'll see a printed weather report. Note down the departure runway, dial in the QNH listed here. And where it says acknowledge receipt of information Charlie, remember that letter for your clearance request. With that all noted down, you can now double click the ground frequency to tune your airplane radios to it. It's now time to contact the controller. If this is your first time flying on VATSIM or you're using a new computer configuration, it's good practice to ask for a radio check before requesting clearance. Here's an example. Stand to the ground, good afternoon. Speedbird 1103 for radio check please. If all is well, the controller will acknowledge that they've heard you and the next step is to request clearance. Stats to ground, good afternoon, Speedbird 1103 is aircraft type A320 on stand 51 with information Charlie. Request clearance to Glasgow as file please, ready to copy. The controller should now give you clearance for your flight. They will also assign you a SID and a squawk code. You should acknowledge that information by reading it back in a similar way to this example. Utava 1 Romeo, squawk 2035, Speedbird 1103. This is the point at which I usually enter my flight plan into the FMC using the runway and SID I've just been given, as well as the en route waypoints and airways that I filed in my flight plan. The only bit I don't fill in yet will be the arrival runway and star because that should be assigned later on. This is also the point where you'll fill in your perf pages and configure your autopilot panel ready for flight. 
Enter the squawk code that you were given as part of your clearance, and you're now ready to call for push and start. Start the ground speed with 103, ready to push and start, please. The controller will now approve you to push and start. Acknowledge the permission you've received. Push and start approved with speed with 103. Then push back and start your engines. Once your engines are started and you're ready to taxi, call ATC for taxi clearance. Stats are ground, speed mode 1103, you ready for taxi? ATC will generally now clear you for taxi and assign you a route. This will usually start with the name of a hold point at the runway, followed by the letters of the taxiways you'll need to get there. As always, note it down and read it back. Hold Sierra 1 via Charlie Hotel and Sierra Speed Mode 1103. As you approach the hold, if tower or center are online, you'll be asked to tune to their frequency. If no other controllers are present, you'll be asked to tune to Unicom. You should acknowledge the handoff. 112 decimal 8, speed mode 1103, thank you. On this flight, there were no controllers available after ground, so we tuned to Unicom, which is 122 decimal 8. At the hold, if you've been told to contact another controller, you should contact them and request takeoff clearance. If you're on Unicom, all you have to do is announce your takeoff intentions as you taxi out for runway. Stats of traffic, speed bit 1103, departing runway 22 on your target 1 For the en route segment, if you're handed off to or asked to contact a centre controller, make sure you read back and follow any instructions they give you. But in the absence of specific direction or on Unicom, let the plane fly its plan. During the en route segment, if you're in contact with a controller, they will probably assign you an approach, which you should read back and enter. If you're on Unicom, you're free to choose a suitable approach and runway. Descent, deceleration and routing to final will generally be controlled by a center and or approach controller. Remember to read back and follow their instructions, so you arrive at a final approach fix at the controller's desired speed, altitude and heading. At this point, if a tower controller is online, you'll be handed off to them and they'll give you permission to land. For descent, deceleration and routing to final on Unicom, just let the airplane follow the plan. Then activate approach mode as usual. On Unicom, I usually announce my position when I intercept the localizer. Glasgow traffic, speed bed 1103, type A320, intercepting the localizer for Glasgow runway 5. Followed by another call when I'm on final. Glasgow traffic, speed bed 1103, final runway 5. Upon vacating the runway, if there's a tower controller online, they will hand you off to ground, or if there's no ground controller online, you'll be handed off to Unicom, at which point you can just taxi to your gate and shut down. If you land at an airport with no tower controller, once you vacate the runway, it's good practice to let the traffic know you've done this. Plus good traffic, speed at 1103, clear off runway. Hold short before entering the taxiway. If a ground controller is online, they'll request that you contact them so they can direct you to a gate. In the absence of a ground controller, just taxi to a gate of your choosing and shut down. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. I plan to record more flights on VATSIM with ATC audio. So please drop a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of those. Drop any questions in the comments section below. Take care and I'll see you next time.